Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Delhi remains shrouded in smog. Mumbai becomes new victim of pollution in India. Pakistan is ready to revive SARC, says Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif. And Taliban hits back against criticism over public execution and flogging. And now for all the details. As the Indian capital of New Delhi choked on the smog, the country's financial hub Mumbai has also become prey to pollution in recent days, with the air touching hazardous levels on Friday. The situation has raised concerns of long-term health risk to people living in the country's two highly populated cities. A report. Air quality in India's financial capital, Mumbai, was in a very poor category on Friday, worse than smog-filled national capital, New Delhi, raising concerns of long-term health risks to people living in the country's two highly populated cities. The situation was expected to remain the same for the next two, three days, and Mumbai residents were advised to stay indoors and avoid long walks, according to the federal government website that charts air quality in Indian cities. Mumbai has so far not suffered poor air quality for prolonged periods, but environmentalists say the city's air quality was likely to worsen due to infrastructure expansion. जिसके वजह से हमको डेली अब मास्क पहनना पड़ रहा है हमारे ऑफिस में भी काम चल रहा है जिसके वजह से और धूल मट्टी आ रही है जिसके वजह से हमको फिर से मास्क पहनना पड़ रहा है मीनवाइल न्यू दिल्ली रिमेन श्राउडेड इन थिक स्मॉग ऑन फ्राइडे एस कूलर वेदर एक्सेसिबेटेड द पोल्यूशन वोस फॉर विच 20 मिलियन पीपल Residents of New Delhi and its suburban areas endure poor air quality every winter as colder, heavier air traps, construction dust, vehicle emissions and smoke from the burning of crop stubble in the nearby states of Punjab and Haryana. So, when I became the victim, I am telling you about 10 days from now, that I am feeling like I am here in congestion or I am taking a breath or I am taking a breath or I am taking a breath. तो अजीब सा एक मतलब क्या बोलेंगे उसको जलन सी हो रही है आंखों में भी। The authorities had earlier this week banned all private construction in Delhi and surrounding areas and enforced restrictions on diesel vehicles driving in the city until Friday. Nepal's Supreme Court on Friday annulled the letter of Parliament Secretariat which had stated the impeachment motion filed against Chief Justice Kolendra Shamshe Rana to be ineffective. The court stated that the Parliament Secretary did not have any right to issue such a notice. The Supreme Court of Nepal on Friday in an interim order annulled the letter of Parliament Secretariat which had termed impeachment motion filed against suspended Chief Justice Cholendra Shamsher Rana to be ineffective. The order from the Supreme Court was delivered on a writ petition filed by senior lawyers who termed the letter illegal and demanded its cancellation. The constitutional bench headed by Acting Chief Justice Hari Krishna Karki stated, that implementation of the decision of Federal Parliament Secretary Dr. Bharat Raj Gautam's notice will not take place as he did not have any right to issue such a notice. In the controversial letter, Gautam had argued since election of new House of Representatives has taken place, the impeachment becomes ineffective. A total of 98 lawmakers from the ruling coalition had filed the impeachment motion against Rana on February 13, detailing 21 charges against the Chief Justice such as failing to check corruption among others. The motion was tabled in the House in March, but it was put on hold since then. Suspended Chief Justice Rana continues to stay under tight security at his government residence. He is due to retire on December 13 and has maintained he will not resign 
and is ready to face impeachment by the parliament which is the constitutional process to remove the chief justice moving on senior leader of pakistan's opposition pti party fawad choudhry has said that punjab chief minister parvez ilahi will have to dissolve the provincial assembly if his pmlq party wants to stay in alliance with the pti he said any delay to dissolve the assembly will hinder early elections PTI Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf senior leader Fawad Chaudhry on Thursday declared that Punjab Chief Minister Chaudhry Parvez Ilahi will have to dissolve the provincial assembly if his PMLQ party wants to stay in alliance with the PTI reports suggest Chaudhry made the remarks while commenting on recent rumors that suggested Ilahi did not want to dissolve the assembly anytime soon He said that CM Ilahi and his son Munis had said on record that they wanted to continue their partnership with the PTI. Chaudhry claimed all PTI stakeholders were united on the front that Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa assemblies would be dissolved this month, adding that any delay will hinder early elections and lead Pakistan to continue to head towards debt trap of default. और इसलिए हमने हमारे जो इतिहादी हैं PMLQ के दोस्त उनको भी हमने ये कन्वे कर दिया है कि तहरीक इंसाफ ये असम्बलियाँ तहलील करने का इरादा रखती है और इन शाह तला जो टाइम फ्रेम है वो यही है यही दिसंबर में ही हमने ये फैसला किया है कि असम्बलियाँ तहलील होंगी हर सूरत में चौधरी फर्दर क्लेम स्टेट इंस्टीट्यूशन इंक्लूडिंग द इलेक्शन कमीशन हैड फॉर गॉटन देयर ओन क्लेम्स ऑफ बींग ए पोलिटिकल The remarks came as the poll body has initiated proceedings to strip PTI chief Imran Khan of his party's chairmanship following his disqualification in the Tosha Khana reference case. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Thursday said his country is ready to revive the SARC process. The last summit of regional grouping of eight countries was held in 2014 in Nepal. The next summit which was supposed to be held in 2016 in Islamabad got postponed as India, Bangladesh, Bhutan and Afghanistan backed off following the attack on an Indian army base by Pakistani terrorists in 2016. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Thursday said his country is ready to revive the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation (SARC) process. The comments from Pakistan Premier came on the occasion of the bloc's Charter Day. In a tweet, Shahbaz said, "SARC Charter Day is a reminder of vast untapped potential of regional development, connectivity, and cooperation among countries of South Asia." Sharif further added people of SARC countries are victim of missed opportunities with SARC stuck in limbo. Pakistan is ready to play its part for its revival he said. SARC is a regional grouping of 8 countries India, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Maldives, Bangladesh and Afghanistan. The last summit of the regional grouping was held in 2014 in Nepal. The next summit was supposed to be held in 2016 in Islamabad but got postponed. as india bangladesh bhutan and afghanistan backed off after indian army base in uri sector was attacked by pakistani terrorists india and the other three nations blamed pakistan for vitiating the region's atmosphere while an informal summit I mean, was held is, virtually uh, you know, I, in I, I, 2020 I, 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 led by indian I, I, prime minister narendra modi the physical summit hasn't taken place yet experts believe while it is important to revitalize the grouping Pakistan support to allow Taliban rulers to represent Afghanistan in SARC can push it further in an exile. Reacting to the international outcry over its first public execution since taking over Afghanistan, the Taliban hit out and called the criticism reprehensible and interference in the internal matters of the country. Taliban spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid said that the criticism reeked of a lack of understanding about Islam as well as Afghanistan. Amid outrage and criticism over the public execution of a man accused of murder and public floggings, the Taliban on Thursday defended its actions and termed the international criticism reprehensible and interference in Afghanistan's internal matters. Taliban spokesperson Zabinullah Mujahid on Twitter said that their action was criticized due to a lack of information. 
He stressed that 99% of the people in Afghanistan are Muslim and they are being criticized for applying Islamic sentences, which shows that some countries and organizations have problem with Islam. He added that death penalties are given all around the world, including in America and Europe. The reaction came after the UN condemned the Taliban's action and US State Department spokesperson Ned Price said it indicates that Taliban seeks to return to their regressive and abusive practices of the 1990s. Public lashings and executions by stoning took place under the previous 1996-2001 rule of the Taliban. Such punishments later became rare and were condemned by the foreign-backed Afghan governments that followed though the death penalty remained legal in Afghanistan. In news from Sri Lanka, in a bid to tackle its worst economic crisis in decades, the Sri Lankan parliament has approved a budget that includes reforms aimed at improving the country's finances. The budget provides for a restructuring of state-owned enterprises and reduced subsidies for electricity based on proposals by the IMF under a preliminary $2.9 billion bailout plan. Sri Lanka's parliament on Thursday approved a budget that includes reforms aimed at improving the country's finances as it attempts to recover from its worst economic crisis in decades. The $15 billion budget includes a $117 million relief package for those affected by the crisis. The budget provides for a restructuring of state-owned enterprises, reduced subsidies for electricity and tax increases to boost state revenue based on proposals by the IMF, International Monetary Fund under a preliminary $2.9 billion bailout plan. The government announced in April that it was suspending repayment of nearly $7 billion in foreign debt due this year. Meanwhile, President Ranil Vikramasinghe said that country has had to face adverse repercussions due to the short-sighted popular decisions taken in the past and unpopular decisions would be needed to taken for the country's future prospects. Vikramasinghe said that a parliamentary select committee will be established on a resolution by the parliament to look into those who led the economy to bankruptcy with their incorrect fiscal policies. The country of 22 million people, famed for its beaches, ancient temples and aromatic tea, has been struggling for months to pay for essential imports of fuel, food and medicines because of a lack of foreign exchange. Hina Firdos, a budding taekwondo player from Budgam in India's Jammu in Kashmir, has proved that one can accomplish anything with determination. She will be representing India in upcoming International Taekwondo Championship scheduled to take place in Thailand in January 2023. Hina Firdos, a budding Taekwondo player from Badgam in India's Jammu and Kashmir, has proved that one can accomplish anything with determination. Hina will be representing India in the upcoming International Taekwondo Championship in Thailand. Coming from a small village, Hina says she faced a lot of criticism from society for playing sports. She adds, while her relatives said to focus on studies instead of playing taekwondo, her parents supported her to pursue the game. Talking about her journey, she recalled she played her first game in an inter-school match without any formal training and managed to secure a gold medal. Later with her teachings from a Srinagar-based academy and then training with her coach Sayyid Suja Shahi in Badgam, she went on to win medals at state and the national level. A girl who is like this, who can't do self-defense themselves. So I want to give this message to those girls that it's a good game of football. It's not that it's a good game of football in which they don't get any benefit or anything. हर एक स्पोर्ट्स में बेनिफिट मिलता है लेकिन मार्शल आर्ट एक ऐसी गेम है जो लड़की को खुद को प्रोटेक्ट करने में काम आती है जो वो खुद जो किसी और पर डिपेंड ना हो हिनास कोच सैयद सूजा कॉल्स हर अ हार्ड वर्किंग प्लेयर इट वाज हर टेक्निक एंड किक पावर व्हिच कॉट माय अटेंशन सूजा एडेड द कोच फर्दर सेड हिना विल मेक द कंट्री प्राउड इन द अपकमिंग टूर्नामेंट Praising the initiatives like Khelo India and Khelo Kashmir, he termed it beneficial for budding players as they provide opportunity to young players for playing outside their home turfs. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.